Hi Kat, nice to meet you. Hi Holly. <laughs> it's uh, great to have a chat with you and thanks for taking the time. So today I wanted to open up with um, some questions just to get us going. So three quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. No thought around your answers really, well as little as possible. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? Fur. Would you rather be an unimportant character in the last movie you saw or an unimportant character in the last book you read? I would say an unimportant character in the last book I read. Okay. And last one. Would you rather be killed off in your favourite horror or thriller or have to live the rest of your days as a damsel in distress? Oh, definitely be killed off. <laughs> good answers, good answers. Okay, so I recently read Harry Lake. And I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. Um, and, I, and to be honest, horrors aren't normally kind of my go-to. So this was really refreshing for me to sort of get myself uh, into that sort of space. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, um, can you give us a bit of an introduction about it? For those who have sure. Um, so for anyone who hasn't read it, um, Harrow Lake tells the story of Lola, who is the teenage daughter of a horror movie director. Um, and she arrives home one day to their New York apartment and finds that her father has been brutally attacked. So is sent to stay in Harrow Lake, this town um, which was the setting for one of his most famous horror films. And it's also where her parents met because her mother was the star of that horror film. And it's where her grandmother now lives. Um, the grandmother that she doesn't know. So she gets to Harrow Lake and finds a very strange town obsessed with its, um, the, the past that it has with the movie and its own tragic history. And with Lorelei, who is Lola's mother, um, who disappeared from her life 12 years ago. And she was obsessed with the monster. It is so good. And for those who haven't read it, my question is why? Why have you not read it yet? <laughs> because it is so good, especially as we've just been through Halloween. So that was your perfect opportunity to read it. And it would definitely been my, my Halloween recommend. Um, so let's talk about your sort of journey as an author. So I think I'm right in saying you've had five books to now. Um, so when did when and how did the journey start and what's your best bits been along the way? Uh, well, my first novel came out in 2014, and that was called Blackfin Sky. I've had three three other novels since then, and a novella which came out as part of uh, like a bind up of three shorter stories. Um, that was called Three Strikes. Um, so yes, five five books over the last six years. Not too bad. Um, but I didn't actually start writing seriously until I was, I think, about 25. Um, I studied English with creative writing at uni. Um, I kind of burned myself out on reading, so I didn't even read a book for a couple of years after that. Um, but I'd always loved writing uh, short stories, usually poetry sometimes. Um, but I don't know why, for some reason, it never, ever occurred to me to try writing as a job um, you know, to try and make a career out of it um, until I was 25 and I started reading YA and it was you know, the boom time for like uh, Twilight and you know the Hunger Games all these big big books were making YA so much more mainstream um, so obviously I picked up you know all of the big books and just fell in love with that age category and thought I will give it a go. Brilliant and what would you say were your best best bits along this journey so far? Well, it was such a sort of muddle through, find my feet sort of an experience um, because I, I didn't have any friends who were writers or interested in writing. Um, so a lot of like the information that I learned about, you know, how to become a writer, it was through Twitter and, you know, online, going through websites and stuff like that and um, entering like query contests to try and find a literary agent. And having those little successes along the way, you know, where you'd have an agent that, you know, showed interest in your work for the first time. I mean, those, those are like massive milestones when you're know, trying to find your way to becoming an author. So, yeah, quite a few of those, you know, just the firsts that you, you have your, your agent signing with an agent, um, you know, the first publisher who shows interest in you. And yeah, just so many firsts. They're all the good things. And have you published all of your books with the same publisher or has it sort of changed by book and 
and sort of has would you say um as your writing sort of developed so as the sort of the interest in maybe larger scale publishers versus others that probably well, I've I've worked with um, smaller publishers, and I'm at the moment working with Penguin Random House, which is you know a big one. Um, different different experience, but you know both have really really great points to them. Um, my my first book came out with Firefly Press, which is a Wales based um, publisher. They they're doing really well actually, but my book with them, Blackfin Sky, was the first YA novel that they'd ever published. They were quite a new publisher at the time. Um, so, you know, it was nice that they were willing to sort of take a, a gamble on me, basically, because you know, they hadn't, you know, they had all of these submissions to choose from and they chose mine to be their first YA. So that was, you know, one of the, the big moments for me. Uh, and working with them has been absolutely great. I had um, another novel out with them after that and the novella that I mentioned as part of the bind up, that was with them too. In the US, I worked with Running Press on that, the debut novel, so it was with Firefly here, Running Press in the United States, and they're kind of a, a mid-sized indie uh, publisher. And yeah, great to work with too. Um, and after that, Harrow Lake is the first book that I've had out with uh, Penguin Random House, and that's a two book deal. So I'll have another one out with them next summer. Cool, we'll talk about that later. So let's go back to Harrow Lake, because I think there's so much more that we can obviously talk about without sort of giving too much away for people who haven't read it. But where did you draw your inspiration from for Harrow Lake and in particular, Mr. Jitters as the main character? Well, I say one of the main characters. <laughs> he, he's sort of more the villain, I would say, than the main yeah, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Um, well, I'm just such a big horror fan. I love horror movies and, you know, reading horror, obviously. But um, yeah, I grew up watching horror films and it was, you know, the, the big 80s and 90s uh, slash movies and big monster horror franchises, you know, the Halloween, uh, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, all of those. Yeah, all the classics. Um, yeah, I, you know, I was growing up watching these, so obviously just absorbing all the, the monstrous elements. Um, and I think, you know, more recently, you know, like Slender Man, you know, these uh, urban legends that come up and they definitely were some inspiration for for Mr. Jitters in particular and like the Babadook as well. Mm. I love that film. Yeah. So um, good. But yeah, for the, the novel itself, um, I think it was just an amalgamation of all kinds of different things. The, the book itself morphed a lot um, through my revision process. It started life looking very different to the finished story. Um, and there are lots of little stories within Harrow Lake that were kind of like little tangents that maybe I thought about taking but didn't. So they ended up as little kind of capsule stories within it. Um, so yeah, I have uh, not a very tidy way of writing, but it ends up getting somewhere. So yeah, that's that's really, good, good, really good outcome. So. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could describe Mr. Jitters in five words, how would you describe him? Creepy, jittery, hungry. <laughs> Dark and weird. Very accurate, I would say. <laughs> he's just, he's eerie, isn't he? As well, mm. I'd definitely say he's very eerie. And it is a, he's a thing of nightmares for sure. Um, well, yeah, he yeah. was actually the thing of nightmares because I, I have sleep paralysis dreams. Um, okay. So, you know, quite often have these uh, dreams where I'm just lying in bed and sort of dreaming that I'm in bed and can't move and something sort of creeping towards me. So he's kind of, he was the product of one of those two. Okay. But um, yeah, it's the only useful thing about sleep paralysis dreams, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's a very pleasant experience, but I guess uh, you've right. got some inspiration <laughs> from it and it's, it's been successful. Um, one thing I do love about the story as well is all the, like you say, you said the capsule stories, but how they all, these little pieces really intricately entwine and bring the whole story together as you go along. And I think, I think it makes, makes the story what it is. And when you come to kind of the ending and then you go, or oh, you're sort of going through and you're like, well, okay, maybe it could be this. And you're sort of formulating your own theories behind 
what that could mean or where this is going to go and then something else sort of appears in in that sort of story that you've been following along the way and it sort of takes you off a different tangent um I, I really like that about the book um so I mentioned this in my original review but I wanted to know if you can give us any snippet of has it been mentioned or seeded about any future movie or series or you know seeing it on like Netflix or anything like that in the future well, there's there's no news in that regard yet, but um, fingers crossed. You know, it's still still a possibility. So yeah, yes. I think no, would... no big announcements yet. I'm afraid. Right. <laughs> yeah, no juicy goss just yet. I think it would be per it would be so great to see it as like like you say because it's got that sort of old school slasher vibe to it in a way. It, you could sort of see it in in that sort of film context. I have to keep my eyes peeled for that. So. Big news, as we mentioned earlier, you've got another YA read on the way. It's coming to us summer 2021 and it's called Burden Falls, if I'm correct. Um, right. So another small town thriller entwined with murder, local legends, that kind of thing. So can you give us a bit of a teaser of what to expect? Absolutely. Um, it's another small town, um, also in Indiana. Um, and it's a town with a history involving witches and curses and there's a lot of murder going on there <laughs> um, and things really kick off when a dead girl's body washes up at the bottom of a waterfall okay okay <laughs> i'm hooked i want it i want it now um it sounds really good i don't suppose there's any sort of link between the two in any way or you kind of obviously you mentioned that it was a two book deal with with penguin um, are the books in any way like I guess not part of a series but sort of linked in any any sort of way or are they com two completely separate pieces of work? They are um yeah completely separate um but they you know could coexist in the same world I mean there, there are no like linked characters or anything like that but, but yeah a very similar sort of vibe I would say. Okay awesome so when summer do we know is there any sort of inkling of, of what point or just generalised summer for now? It's out in the UK on the 8th of July. Okay, and when can we pre-order? You can pre-order now. Um, I believe it is up on uh, at least the, the bigger online retail sites. Um, I'm not sure when bookshops will be able to, to order it in, but hopefully soon. Okay. And I awesome. think we'll have a cover reveal coming soon. Um, Exciting. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing the UK one. I've seen the US the US cover is amazing. I'm really excited for when that's going to be revealed. But but yeah, haven't seen the UK one yet. Brilliant. And is it um, similar uh, illustrator to kind of what you've had on the front cover of Harry Lake? We, is that sort of vibe or somebody completely different? Um, in the, the US one that I've seen is, I believe, by somebody different. Um, I think that in the UK, it's the same team working on the design for it. So I would imagine it's going to be in a similar sort of style to the yellow UK cover. Oh, amazing. Um, so I did love, and I think it's a real thing that everybody sort of like book scrum wise are loving at the moment because it's great for photos, but the sprayed edges as well of the books is so cool. Yeah. Brilliant. Love, a, love a sprayed edge. <laughs> the sprayed edge. It's the new thing. Um, Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. If you haven't read Harry Lake, please go out and read it. It's fantastic. Keep your eyes peeled for, obviously you can go out and order it now, but for Kat's next book and uh, when you can go and get it, go and get it. All right. Thanks, Kat. Take thanks care. very much, Holly. See Thanks. you.